Walter Brennan in Ten in Texas on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gene Whitman. This evening, I'd like to say a word about New Year's resolutions. Some of yours are probably concerned with home improvement. To help you make your home beautiful, we suggest Speed Easy Wall Finish. Speed Easy saves time and money because it dries in just one hour. Because you can get those rooms done so quickly, and it costs less than $3 to do over the average room in one color. Speed Easy comes in 11 beautiful colors to suit the most fastidious decorator. With a large brush or roller, you can apply Speed Easy over most interior wall surfaces, including wallpaper. Start the new year off with a cheerful house. Use Speed Easy, one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents Ten in Texas, starring Walter Brennan as Len Struthers on the Cavalcade of America. Every year in August, there's a cowboy reunion at Bell Hart, Texas, where old hands of the biggest ranch America ever knew gather to swap tall tales of the bad days in frontier Texas and to sing the songs they used to sing while herding longhorn cattle across three million acres of panhandle range. Should you pause to inquire into the history of the fabulous XIT ranch, you'd be directed to the leanest and leatheriest of the cowpokes. Howdy! Here he comes, <laughs> old Len Struthers. Watch him now. He'll unstring the makings, roll a cigarette, and sit back and tell you the story of the big ranch that changed the West. Well, see, King Ranch in South Texas is big, but the old XIT ranch is three times bigger. Way back in 1870, our state legislature decided we need a new capital building at uh, Austin. So one of our representatives had an idea. Gentlemen of the legislature, the sovereign state of Texas should have a new state house. A speed house taken in size and magnificence only to that of the capital in Washington. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very well spoken, sir, but what do we use for money? Yeah. Gentlemen, gentlemen, what does Texas have more of than anything on earth? Beauty, brains, and courage. Texas has an abundance of beauty, brains, and courage, but the thing we got the most of is land. Now I propose... I propose we offer three million acres of the panhandle to anyone who will build us a capital building worthy of the Lone Star State. Gentlemen, gentlemen, is that all we can offer so generous a party? That's, uh, and the privilege of becoming a Texan. <laughs> Some years later, a couple of the Chicago wholesale merchants, uh, John and Charles Farwell, took up the offer. They signed a contract without even seeing the land and formed what was known as the Capital Ranch Syndicate. I first heard about it at the uh, time when, uh, well, I was just a little trigger happy and had a disposition like a dyspeptic sidewinder. Colonel B.G. Campbell of the old Bar B.Q. outfit called me and Ann Blocker and Johnny Black over for coffee. Why we was a toast in a boot to this campfire, he you told us about it. Well, it's going to be the biggest ranch in the West, and I'm to be manager. Uh, how about joining me, boys? What do you think, Blackie? Yeah, I thought we was fixing to get our ropes on a few strays, set up an outfit of our own. Yeah, plenty of mavericks left in the range. Oh, boys, the, the day of the maverick is near in an end. We've got big plans for this ranch, boys. They can run over 150,000 heads. Oh, yeah. Our spread will be 250 miles long by 30 wide. <laughs> Bigger than some nations and a lot of states. Ten full counties. They just picked out a brand yet barbecue. Nope. Let's see. Ten in Texas. Hey, X stands for ten, don't it? You did when I went to school. Here, I got a brand for you. I'll mark it down by the firelight. X. I T standing for ten in Texas. Yeah, it's a good brand, all right. It'd be hard to change. Yeah, you bet I could change it. Oh, that uh, looks good to me. Hi, right, Charlie. Boys, I'd like to have you meet our big. Oh, wait a, wait a minute, Colonel. Um, just Charlie. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Now, this is Charlie, boys. He he come west from Chicago to learn the cow business. How do you do, fellas? You ain't got no use for bootblack cow punches. 
Well, I'm very sorry. Uh, just what is a boot black puncher? Oh, don't mind him, Charlie. Len cut his eye teeth on the book, so it means Sanderfoot or Greenhorn. Well, I guess there's no concealing it. I I am a Greenhorn, all right. But I promise you I'll learn the cattle business or bust. Stranger, you're biting off more than you can chew. Well, uh, now come on, boys. How about it? You want to join up with the new XRT? Well, so long as we've staked you to a brand, I reckon we might as well. The first autumn saw over 20,000 heads of Longhorn delivered to the new range. Trails rumbled with freight wagons, hauling in lumber, equipment, and food supplies. Every time an outfit brought in more cattle, why, the boss is under orders to buy them out, lock, stock, and barrel. To hire them in, too. All of which didn't bring nothing but ill will to the HIT. And that, coupled with the rules posted to govern us hands, had all of us rearing for rebellion. Hey, fellas, uh, we're uh, getting the bookkeeper, so tomorrow we've got to start signing payrolls and work a poor. What? Oh. I won't do it. And I won't do it. Oh. Orders is orders, boys. Now, quiet now, quiet. Charlie here has invented a little contraption the syndicate wants us to put into operation. Uh, tell them about it, Charlie. I've uh, invented a branding chute. Save us the trouble of roping and tying calves. Oh, uh, a dogging squeeze, huh? Now, ain't that just the sort of a contraption the syndicate would come up with? Listen, you greenhorn. When you take a rope out of the hands of a cowboy, you got nothing left. Now, no back talk, Len. Orders is orders. Yeah, that's all for me. Now, listen a minute. Any of you fellas quitting with me? Well, I do. I aim to throw my loop on all the maverick trays I see. Bookkeepers. Doggies, squeezers. I'll be hanged for I work for an outfit that don't know how to brand a cab. No, wait. I'm through. Good night, goodbye, and bad luck. Mr. Len Southers, one of our unwashed and unvarnished cowboys. How do you do, Mr. Southers? Uh, how do you, ma'am? There's it, a storm coming up, and, and I was wondering if you'd put Miss Katie on behind you and ride back to the ranch house. Well, old Smokey ain't never been read by no lady, and you ain't gonna like this. Give her a hand, Squeak. No. Now, ma'am, do you reckon you can ride with all them skirts and uh, them petticoats? Well, I, I'll manage. Oh, I'm not. I'm out. Look at that. Hey, how the boys pick out a new wheel, Len? Hey, help it out, Miss Katie. Hey, don't fall off. Well, there's nothing to hold on to. Uh, uh, do you mind if I put my arms... <laughs> I mean, place my arms around you? Well, ma'am, I'm sort of ticklish, but... Uh... <laughs> well, if you don't like it, Len, climb down off my horse and I'll take your place. Yeah, uh, hush up. Let's go, Smokey. Come on. Uh, hold tight, ma'am. Don't let him get away. <laughs> it's awfully nice of you to uh, uh, accommodate me like this. Oh, she said she's nothing, ma'am. I... Why are you leaving the SIP? Oh, I'm tired of it. Nothing but rules and foolish goings on. Bookkeepers, doggies, squeezers. Say, how come a pretty girl like you coming out here to this godforsaken country? Well, I work for the syndicate. Work? Mm hmm. You work for the syndicate? Yeah. I'm the new bookkeeper. Bookkeeper? Um, don't that beat all. All right, all right, come on. Get up there. Get out that there book, you lazy sidewinders. Come on there. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Squeak. How come you come back last night, Lynn? Yeah. I thought you were through for good. The fella can change his mind, can't he? Why are you getting all slicked up, Lynn? Yeah, that hair oil makes you smell like the morning after a pole cat picnic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how come you're curling your mustache? Oh, see, come on, fellas. 
the colonel wants you up to the big house to, to meet the new bookkeeper and sign the payroll. Oh, we all well, for one ain't signing sign no payroll and ain't going to meet no bookkeeper. How about you, Len? Blackie, I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> I caught you, Katie. I caught you. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, Len. Look at that beautiful view. Yeah, never mind the scenery. What's that secret you was going to tell me? Well, the colonel's going to name you foreman. Foreman? I don't let the boss know that I let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, so far as I'm concerned, it's still in the bag. You mean you don't want to be foreman? No, ma'am, not me. Being foreman of the XIT is like being measured for a shroud. Lance Trotters, you think you're a rugged cowboy, and you like to tell about how many men you can best in a fight. And you brag about having courage, and you say that you're not afraid of anything, don't you? Well, uh... Never turned my back on trouble yet. Well, let me tell you, it's easy to go along with everyone else condemning the XIT method. But it's going to take courage to fight for the big ram. Katie, the hornets is only buzzing and the rattlers is merely rattling. But one of these days, all the hate that's accumulating against the syndicate's going to swarm and strike this ranch all the worse. But I'll go along with you. Oh, Len, then you're with us. Did you say us? I'm with you, Katie. All the way. Brother, you looking for me, Blackie? It's John Suit, and I'm looking for you. We all looking for you. Ain't we, boy? Yeah? Well, guess what's a festering you this time? Them new rules you just posted say that no hands of XIT to carry firearms without special authority. That's right. You reckon it's how you're big enough to disarm me? Well, I reckon you could do it if it's a mindy. Eh? Well, then start disarming. And if you move a muscle, I'll drill you full of lead. Put up your hands, John Blacker. Got you covered. Hey, it's the green or thin, Johnny. No, no, you don't. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. What is that? Oh, look at that. Yeah, that does for you, Blackie. Now the rest of you reach. Good work, Len. Take the gun, Charlie. Toss him here from my feet. You get a lot of nerve for a tenderfoot, Charlie. Don't worry about me, Len. All right. Foreman, give me an assignment. Starting this morning, all the hands set in line and outriders will be divided into crews. We got fence to string. Fence? Fence? Yeah, that's what I said, fence. There's extra pay in it. It's going to be a long-term job. You feel like working, Mr. Black? I'm not working for any outfit that expects his hands to go on arm. As for stringing fence, it's a job for nesters, plain dirt farmers. It's not for me. Then clear off of here, John Black. Well, Mr. Greenhorn, it's pretty clear to me now just who's been responsible for all the rules around here. Any of you boys coming with me? Or would you rather be nesters working for this Greenhorn and his syndicate? Well, that's that. Good riddance. So why in the poles in them wagons? The rest of your pile of board and move out. What's the trouble, boys? A little mutiny, Katie. Excuse me. Oh. All right, you fellas. Let's get going. <laughs> well, Katie, they got me bossing the crew to the string fence. 2,000 miles of it. I'll miss you, Lane. Yeah, and this makes me the biggest dog gun nester in Texas. I know, Lane. And you're doing it for me. Katie, you. I've been wondering to ask you a very important question. Hey, Len. Wagons are rolling. Uh, uh, saddle up and ride. Okay, Charlie. Uh, Miss Katie, I... Uh, yes, yes, Len. It's... Katie, I'll think you every time we set a post. Adios. You are listening to Walter Brennan as Len Struthers in Ten in Texas on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through Kennedy. Months on a job of digging post holes, setting posts and stringing wires of that dratted barbed wire. Then at Christmas time, we came in for shindig. Katie and a few other girls was on hand, but they weren't enough females to go around, so some of the boys tied hankies on their sleeves and made off like they was ladies for the square dancing. We sure had a time of it. <laughs> Get in your places like horses in the trees. <laughs> Katie, Katie, I've been, uh, I've been wanting to tell you how much this... Black boys and circle to the right. Come on, you girls, we'll dance all night. Ah, uh, hi, Len. Uh, this there's more fun in the bar of the month, isn't it? 
But I'm sure to get kind of tired, though, paying off as a woman. Now, turn to the home and swing your own. Katie, I'll miss you every minute. To... Oh, and I, I've missed you, Lenny. I've been going to ask oh, you to... Oh, Doggone it, the fairy hit me. That's King's partner, so often he never gets to speak his own mind. Whoever invented square dance anyway. Hey, hey that pop, chase that square, chase that pretty girl around the world. After the holidays, we went out with another load of wire and posts. Much became years in that blasted fence line. One night in the dark of the moon, I heard cattle on the move, and it was black and his gang and driving a herd of a choice breeding stock toward the New Mexico line. So I limbered my peacemaker and rid in a blazing. Cattle stampeded and headed back to the XIT. I followed at a safe distance until the rushes gave up the chase. Then I went after the herd and had the critters pretty well in hand when two horsemen went up to me on a wire. Reach for the stars, cowboy. Don't pull anything or more than it'll see you full of daylight. I'm reaching. What outfit you with? XIT. Who you with? Rangers. Just like I told you, Pete. The old man in cahoots with the rustlers. Yeah, you're making a mistake here, Rangers. I'm Lynn Struthers, boss of the fencing crew. Take your shooting on, Pete. Then turn these cattle back. I'll take him only to headquarters. <laughs> I don't know what to do, Len. The Colonel quit as manager, and Charlie's in Chicago, and Mr. Boyce, the new manager, is suspicious of everyone. Well, I saved that herd for the XIT. The Rangers say our own men are working with the rustlers. So Mr. Boyce is firing everyone and bringing in outsiders. Yeah, so that brings us all his rustlers, huh? Oh. Are you going on working for a setup like this? Well, Len, Charlie has asked me to marry him. Marry him? Well... What? Well, I've been out stringing fence like a doggone nester. Charlie Greenhorn's been a feather in his nest. No, Len, I've been wanting to talk it over. All right, Struthers. Mr. Boris is turning you loose. So draw your pay and clear off the place. Clear off the XIT? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, Len. All right. I'll go. I hope you don't mind if I take my old horse smoking with me. He still belongs to me. from ranch to ranch with my heart and my boots. I found out that Johnny Black's outfit wasn't the only one fighting the XIT. I'd been wrongfully accused, but I refused to let the lie become a fact. And I still drew the line on Rushman. But I needed a grub steak, so I finally took a job with Blackie's outfit as, as a cook. Second month I was with them, they came back from a raid filled to the brims with venom and fire water. Was waiting for us when we came through the draw. Yeah. Somebody must have tipped off those rangers. Yeah. I got a good idea. Who? What about little Joe? Did he make it? Well, they got him. Never knew what hit him. Oh, you, you mean the, the kid is is dead? You heard him the first time. Oh, poor little Joe. I, he was too young to die. Yeah, too young to die. And you, you nester, you're too old to live. You tipped off those rangers. I did not. They were waiting for us tonight, and you're the only man in this outfit that stands for the big ranch. Well, don't blame me if little Joe got himself killed. He was a follower in you, not me. I've waited a long time for this. That's good work, Blackie. Let me finish him off. Yeah, he ain't worth the lead of a single bullet. Yeah, rope his feet together. Tie the other end of it to his saddle horn. Let that old nagger, his drag his carcass back to the XIT way belong. Johnny Black or rustling. I don't think you should have come in to prosecute the case, Charlie, even if you are a lawyer. There's so much prejudice. But really, Kitty, I feel better qualified to handle it than any lawyer we might engage. Do you think Black and his crowd have done away with Lynn? It appears that way. There's been no trace of him. Poor guy. Oh, I'll, I'll never forgive myself. It's called again and say... Counsel for the Capitol Syndicate, will you please wind up your case? The men of the jury would like to get back to the ranches before the calves are all cows. <laughs> I'm going to do my best, Katie, dear. Uh, Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, I'd like to call the defendant John Black back to the witness stand. John Black, take a stand. Gentlemen, 
Only the XIT Ranch has brought Cold Angus cattle to this territory. On the night of August the 28th, Ira Orton, formerly the Texas Rangers, caught Mr. Black and his men driving a herd of Cold Angus cattle bearing his brand. Black, where did you get those cattle? I bought them. Where did you buy them? From a man. When did you put your brand on them? Well, now, I don't rightfully remember. You see, on our ranch, we don't wear our men out keeping a lot of records. <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, I charge that the defendant here has been changing the XIT into his own brand. You can stand there and make the charge all day. But if you can't show the jury how it's done, mister, <laughs> you just ain't got no case. <laughs> Is anybody in the house who thinks he can change an XIT brand into mine? Yeah, I can do it. Oh, Lynn I thought... Lynn! Oh, Your Lynn. Honor, Your Honor, I should like to ask for a recess. You've had too many recesses now, Sonny. Go on with the case. You may step down from the witness stand, Mr. Black. Gentlemen of the jury, for new evidence, I should like to introduce a former employee of Mr. Black's ranch. Take the witness stand, Mr. Struthers. So you thought I was dead, huh, Blackie? Well, there's one thing you didn't figure on that drunken moment of yours. Good cow horse like my smokey won't run for where there's a catch on his rope. Swear on the witness. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, God? I do. Mr. Struthers, here's an XIT brand mark and a piece of chalk. Will you demonstrate? Yeah. And here's the way Blackie and his boys done it. You notice that the T slants just a little. Now, just cross the eye and extend the in inside lines of the X like this, see? And continue the stem of the T until the lines meet and form the point of the star. The rest of it's easy. I would say that's mighty ingenious. Gentlemen, we rest our case. <laughs> Lynn, it's so good to have you back. We'll celebrate, Len, as soon as the jury comes in with a verdict. Uh, we want you for best man at our wedding, Len. Wedding? Oh, you mean... Oh, Len, I, I don't know what to say. Well, Katie, I reckon the, uh, know your own mind. And, oh, I wish you and Charlie a lifetime of happiness and ten stalwart sons. All of them Texans of the capital brand. <laughs> Keelan, it's an open and shut case, thanks to you. Order. Order. You say the jury has arrived at a verdict? Yes, Terry Bob. John Black is not guilty. And we'd like to try the capital syndicate for persecuting an honest cow man. <laughs> After 27 years of operation, the greatest of all cattle empires sold out. Men who fought the syndicate uh, finally whipped it. And then they woke up one day to find that the very things they'd condemned the XIT for had enveloped them on all sides. Ranches that pay today use the sound methods of the old XIT, the ranch that changed the West. But uh, I reckon you all want to know about the wedding of Charlie and Katie. Well, you know how women are. They ride, change their mind, and... See, wait just a minute. Oh, Katie! Come on out here and meet the folks. Howdy! <laughs> yes, sir, this is Mrs. Lynn Struthers, folks. <laughs> Took more plotting and planning to land this old coot than them rascals ever used to rustle the life out of the XIG. Ain't that right, Paul? <laughs> yes, right, Ma. Yes, sir. <laughs> Star Walter Brennan will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gaines Whitman. Cattle ranching today is very different from what it used to be in the day of the open ranges. Romance still rides with the herds, but now science rides along. Stockmen know much more than they used to about feed, for one thing. Many of the discoveries which have improved the diet of human beings, like vitamins, are used to improve the diet of range cattle. It is known today that cattle have diseases just as we do. And veterinary science knows more about the diseases, more about how to cure them. An animal in need of medical treatment or surgery 
It's veterinary care that compares very well with the care you or I receive in a hospital. The number of cattle on the range and their health affects your table and your pocketbook. For those are some of the factors which help to determine how much meat is available and what price you must pay for it. Chemistry is making a number of contributions to the welfare of America's herds of beef cattle. The DuPont Company manufactures a compound with a long chemical name, phenothiazine, which is the best known remedy against intestinal worms that cause cattle to lose weight and sometimes die. A most effective remedy against external screw worms is smear number 62, developed by the Department of Agriculture. In this chemical, diphenylamine is the active ingredient. Another DuPont chemical which contributes to the supply of meat is disodium phosphate. The soil in some parts of the country is lacking in phosphorus, and cattle raised in those areas lose weight and energy, get creepy, as cattle men say. Cows often become barren, so no calves are born. But with disodium phosphate added to their feed and drinking water, they stay fat and sleek, bear more calves, and the calves are heavier. Still another compound manufactured by DuPont, BDT, shows promise of controlling life, horn flies, ticks, and other parasites that make life miserable for the cattle. Not only is it practical and efficient to safeguard the health of cattle, but it's more humane, reflecting greater thoughtfulness and kindness to animal friends that must be helped since they are unable to help themselves. Phenothiazine, disodium phosphate, DDT, diphenylamine, in special formulations for the use of cattlemen, are DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, here is Walter Brennan. Well, folks, next week, Cavalcade is going to bring you Joseph Cotton and Claire Trevor and the story of Donald McKay, the American who built the first clipper ships. I'll be listening with you next Monday night when Joseph Cotton and Claire Trevor are heard in Build Me Straight on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. victory on the battlefront, and for each to resolve to undertake with renewed determination his own task. There is much to be done to bring back peace and bountiful plenty to the exhausted world. Each in his own way may have a part in the opportunities the new year brings for all of us. Here's a wish that it may be a happy year of achievement for every one of you. for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Walter Brennan will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, Centennial Summer. Our Cavalcade play was written by Walter Hank Richards and was based on a Reader's Digest article by Lewis Nordyke. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Joseph Cotton with Claire Sever in Build Me Straight on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is a national broadcasting company.